Welcome everyone to the Tactical Tavern. I'm your host Tomas Salas and in this video I'm excited because we are reviewing the Lion Steel Emerson LE1 Karambit. We're going to see what features this blade has to offer you, taking a look at the pros and the cons, so let's cut into it. <laughs> I am a huge fan of karambits. I've handled a lot of them. I love the Emerson Combat Karambit, and I'm also a big fan of Lion Steel's knives. I mean, they also help manufacture some of Bastinelli's blades. So to see an Emerson and Lion Steel collab, I think that is pretty incredible. This is also a ginormous karambit. I'll make sure to put up some size comparisons for you, so make sure you watch all the way through. This comes in with an overall length of 8.25 inches. I mean, that thing is massive. The blade length is 3.25 inches, comprised of magna cut steel. Ooh la la. Now, if you're new to the knife community, magna cut steel is like the hottest thing on the market right now. It offers great edge retention as well as corrosion resistance. Spyderco's using it in their salt lineup because it has so much resistance to rust. So if you want a good working knife, this steel is a fantastic option. When I first got this, it came razor sharp and the edge is still fantastic. I've used it for cardboard slicing, I've used it for rope cutting, average chores that you'd use an EDC knife for because it fits really comfortable in a forward grip, which we'll talk more on here in a minute. But really focusing on this blade, I love how all the edges are chamfered and you'll notice it has like a chiseled tanto tip. Emerson does this because they say it reinforces the tip and I've certainly had no issues because it's still there. I'm really a big fan of the way that they chamfered all these edges and especially with this divot here, it allows you to push cut, meaning that it's actually actually great for woodworking and carving tasks. I think people often forget that karambits are really useful cutting tools. Instead of just tactical fighting knives, of course they're great at that, but really they're tools first, especially for agriculture and farming, kind of like a pocket sickle. You can drop it down, tie off what you need to, and then get back to cutting. So this is really a great workhorse of a blade. In the middle of it, there's also an opening hole, which surprisingly aids in the fidget factor of this blade. I'm also a big fan of the sound. I mean, just listen to that. It has this really cool double click with the detent bead. I personally love the way that this sounds and feels when it locks up. No blade play side to side and no rattle in the open or closed position. This is exceptionally impressive considering that this is made out of one billet of aluminum. It's milled entirely. It like starts as a block, they mill it out, and that is just so cool to see. Locking it into place is a frame lock for right hand users, but you can still operate it with your left hand. It has a steel lock bar insert, helping preserve the integrity and life of the knife, as well as an overdrive pin, so that way it's not gonna torque out on you and you can't bend it back or have it lock up. I also really enjoy the Line Steel logo. I just think it looks really cool on the opposite side of the pivot. While we're around this area, we'll also take a look at the flipper tab. You'll notice that there's a screw on there. Why might that be, you ask? Well, it's removable. And at first I was kind of like, what the heck? Why would you ever want to remove your flipper tab? It's for legality. Some areas and countries, I guess in Europe, you're not allowed to have a flipper action. So in order to make it compliant, they make it removable. And I think that's really cool. This also comes in with a weight of 4.8 ounces. Again, she thick. So the flipper tab certainly helps work and that leads to a thumb ramp because this has that Emerson wave opening feature meaning that you can pocket deploy this, you can use the opening hole and the flipper tab. So there's multiple ways for you to fidget with this tool. The handle design is the aluminum grip. There's some milled texture in there, but in all honesty, it doesn't offer much in the way of traction, especially if your hands are slippery, bloody, wet, sweaty. I don't feel that you're gonna have a lot of grip on here. So you're really relying on the form factor and geometry of the handle. And it does a good job, especially with or without the flipper tab, you still have a guard to prevent your hands from sliding close to that razor sharp magnet cut blade. And this handle is ginormous. It comes in at 5.625 inches. I have pretty average sized hands. I can get a full grip on there, but there is certainly a lot of wiggle room. And that brings me to one of the downsides of this karambit. Typically, I love flipping them like the Fox 599, but this is so big and so large, I rarely flip it around because it doesn't have a lot of control. Of course, I can hear you guys in the comments already. Oh, you know Indiana Jones, right? We got it. But there's an art form to knowing your blade and feeling comfortable with it. And that is something I do appreciate in a blade or tool of any kind. And if you're enjoying this review so far, make sure to drop a like and subscribe so you won't miss future videos helping you save money and upgrade your gear. So that being said, keep in mind at full extension, it's really heavy and there's so much blade play. I mean, look at this, that 
that's me trying to cap it, it just sways. So it is large, but if you are a large guy, this is probably gonna work out really well for you. And it reminds me a lot of the Emerson Combat Karambit, which has similar specifications, but with G10 grips. The ring hole is also enlarged compared to other Karambits, and I believe that's because this is a workhorse of a tool, meaning that if you're wearing gloves, like these premium security cut and stab proof gloves, then it would be a great option to utilize that because if you're in an emergency response setting, cutting through things, you're gonna be able to quickly deploy your blade. Carrying it around is a reversible pocket clip that is deep carry, and I absolutely do not like the pocket clip. I don't mean to sound so harsh. I mean, I love the design, I love that it's deep carry, I love the way that it carries, but when it gets into your hand, it's so thick on the top that it just bites right in, causing a real big discomfort in your hand. If you remove the pocket clip entirely, this is actually ergonomically quite comfortable. But with that pocket clip there, it just kind of forces at least my hand into an awkward position. On the positive side, I do like that it's held together with just one screw, making it simple and fast to switch over depending on how you want to carry it. Kind of like what we talked about in the beginning about how to hold and use this, it's really comfortable in the forward grip, and that's typically how I've been using it, to cut open boxes, utilizing my back. You don't have to arc your wrist like a tanto or a drop point. This kind of does all that cutting work for you. And in the reverse grip, I actually find it more advantageous to remove my finger entirely and just hold it in the reverse grip. This allows me to transition quickly. Of course, you can still do the flips and the tricks, but as a regular working tool, this is really, really nice. In the closed position, if you have ginormous hands, I'm sure you could comfortably wrap it around and use it as an impact device, but for me, it doesn't really work quite well, although you can. And I do enjoy the fact that it has that arrowhead tip on there so you can use it as a potential glass breaker or impact device force multiplier. For everyday carry, it's super smooth to get in and out of the pocket in a variety of pants. You don't have to worry about it shredding because of that smooth aluminum. On the flip side to that, if you do need it quickly, you may have to readjust your grip because it is a little bit slippery. Also considering the weight, I've had this come out a couple times and I've had to like readjust before I can use it or transition to a different grip. For an outdoor adventure setting, normally I would not suggest a karambit for that, but this is actually very versatile and super comfortable to carve. You can utilize it for ropes, for an emergency response situation, to slide under seatbelt, something of that nature. But keep in mind, it's pretty thick behind the edge, so it's not a thin slicer. It's more robust and meant for heavy duty work. I think it kind of comes with that name, LE1, Law Enforcement 1. It's just speculation. Or it could also be for Lion Steel Emerson 1, their first collaboration. All in all, I do enjoy this Karambit quite a bit. It's just hard for me to recommend for beginners or people into flipping it. This is definitely more of a tool, although I can certainly appreciate a lot of the geometry and the design engineering, such as the removable flipper tab and all of the edges being chamfered, especially this deep inner toil. I think it's cool that it's all milled from one block. It's really special. And of course, we can't forget the MagnaCut high performance steel. I really do enjoy a lot of the features that this Karambit has to offer, I would personally just like to see another option in a much more compact package. If you are above six foot or you have really meaty hands or maybe often work with gloves and want a quick deploy feature on your Karambit, I think this makes a fantastic option, especially considering the price. At the time of this review, you can find these blades for around 185, 190. And I think that's actually good value considering the high performance magnet cut, but also if you want an Emerson Super Karambit, those are going for around $325. So you do save a little bit of money with this tool. If you're on the smaller stature or you have really smaller hands, I would not suggest this Karambit because it's really hard to control and it can be a little bit slippery if you don't have that extra leverage in order to wrap around it. I would also love to see an upgraded pocket clip or maybe an aftermarket option for something a little bit more low profile and comfortable as well as black. As promised, here is a size comparison with the Fox 599 Karambit, so it is substantially bigger, but to further drive that point home, I will also compare it to the new Doug Markaita Karambit from Fox Knives in Italy, and that is really where you can see how ginormous this Karambit is. I also will pull out an Emerson Combat Karambit, which is a smaller one, not the Super Karambit, so you can also get a size reference there. In previous posts I've done with this Karambit, I've also gotten requests to compare it to the Civivi Incisor 2, which has the button lock on there. Now, quick thoughts on that, I would definitely go with the frame lock if you want something really robust and strong, but if you want something fun and fidget friendly at your desk, then you can easily go with the Incisor 2 and save a couple bucks. If you enjoyed this review, please help support the channel by dropping a like and subscribing, as well as sharing it with a friend who may also be interested. And while you're there, follow us on Instagram at Tactical Tavern. With all that being said, my name is Tomas Salas. Thank you for watching. I'm excited to see you in the next video. And remember, be prepared, be practical, stay tactical. <laughs>